Hi, this video is part two in my look at the layout I've designed for Tractor Pro 3 and the upcoming release of the new TouchOSC app for Android and iOS. In it, I'm going to be looking at the Remix Deck section and also I'm going to take a little look at how the new TouchOSC editor works. So here we are in the TouchOSC editor. Um, it's been massively improved since the last version and there's been quite a few new features added. Uh, the one I'm just going to talk about briefly today is the pager feature. So we can add a pager and what this will do is it will create um, like a tabbed area that you can use. So you can resize this. Great feature of the new editor is the zoom ability which is really, really nice and really slick and allows you to zoom right in on whatever it is you want to look at. Uh, but yeah, here are the pages here. Uh, we can add new pages down this side here with the properties section. And then if you want to edit the contents of the pager, you simply double click and you can edit whatever it is you like in there. So let's maybe stick in a button and a fader. If we go back out, you see the button and the fader are added. Sorry, it's a red background on both. Um, let's just change that. And now if we go to the live preview, we can switch between the two pages, which is a really neat feature, and it saves an incredible amount of space if you're designing a, a layout like this one. And I've used these uh, pages quite extensively um, throughout the layout I've made, uh, which has been great because it's saved on an awful lot of screen space. And it means you don't do as much hard work in Tractor with the actual mapping itself. So you don't need to use as many modifiers. You can just basically create new buttons. So let's have a look now at the Remix Deck section. Okay, so here we are in Tractor. Um, I've minimized Deck A and Deck B, so we can just look at these Remix Decks here on Deck C and Deck D and my iPad screen is streaming directly to my computer. Um, my mouse is connected to my iPad so that you can see what I'm actually doing on the iPad screen here as well. So if you saw the last video, you'd see that we've got uh, these main controls here to switch between deck A and deck C and deck B and deck D. So we're gonna be looking at deck C and deck D today, which are the remix decks. This is split again here into remix deck. So you've got this remix deck area and then you've got an area here for the step sequencer. Well, let's look at the remix deck first. Um, first of all, we've got load controls. So this is obviously for loading sets and samples. We've got a capture area, which I'll come to in a moment and the play and mix areas as well. So let's look at load first. Uh, here you've got browser controls. So you can expand the browser to the full browser here. You can use these buttons to browse or you can browse through your favorites. Um, if you hold down expand, you can expand whichever folder you're actually on here. So we're on the remix Dex folder. We can expand and contract that. If you hold down shift and move up and down, this will go through the folder section in your browser. So we'll stick with the uh, the remix sets here and we can browse up and down through here and let's load a remix set. It's my favorite. We use this to load the set. And you'll see here on the iPad screen that all of these um, sample slots and cells have now been filled in to show that there is a, a sample there waiting for to play. The quantize button here affects the quantize settings and you can change this with the up and down arrows. So we'll keep it at four beats and quantize on. And you can also change the tempo there as well if you like. Uh, we've got these buttons here, um, which will cycle through the four pages in any remix set. Obviously here we've just got the first 16 sample cells loaded, so it's showing nothing for these pages here and it's showing these as blank. But if you've got a larger remix set, uh, these will all be filled in as well. Next we've got capture. What you can do here is select a source, either deck A, deck B or your loop recorder. Whatever loop you have set, 
you can capture that and load that into an empty cell. So imagine we've got something loaded in deck A. Uh, you can choose the size of the loop that you like. Basically hold down capture, press an empty cell and it'll load into that cell for you. I'll come to play last, but mix, we've got full control here over each sample slot's volume level and the filter level here as well. These Q buttons are universal throughout all of these tabs here. And these are basically your normal transport controls, play, Q, Q, play, flux mode and reverse. And above the transport controls, you have full looping controls too. So finally moving on to play. We can just set that going. If you've got a sample that's waiting to be queued, you'll see what happens to the LED light here. It glows a little brighter while it's waiting to play, and then it just glows normally when it's actually playing. So we have mute buttons here, which will mute each of the four slots. We also have loop and hold controls. Loop, you can control whether the sample loops or whether it's just a one shot. And hold, uh, if hold is on, it'll play the sample through entirely. If hold is off, it'll only play the sample while you've got the sample cell held down. And finally here we've got the reverse button. If you hold this down and then press any of the sample slots, It'll reverse it. We've also got controls here for key lock, so whether it stays in key when you change the tempo, uh, whether to route it to uh, effects units, to monitor or punch. And you can turn any of these on or off by holding down shift and pressing the corresponding sample cell. So here we've got key lock on just in slot one. We've got FX routed just in slot two, etc. So finally we've got the step sequencer. What we'll do first, let's just load a set of samples in. And I'm just using the stock ones that come with tractor. And we'll go with step sequencer essential drums. Ah, one thing I forgot to mention here, you can either load an actual complete set or if you've got a list of samples here in Tractor, um, you can hold that down and press an empty cell and it'll load that single sample into a cell for you. Uh, same with delete, if you hold down delete you can delete individual cells. If you hold down shift and press delete it'll unload the whole set and if you hold down shift and press save that'll save the remix set for you. So we've loaded in this sample set here, which is all uh, just drums. So let's switch to step sequencer. We'll turn this on and play it. As you can see, it's counting through the steps here on the step sequencer. You've got four slots that you can use, one, two, three, and four. One is typically the kick. Two is typically a snare. Three is usually hi-hats. And four is generally percussion. You can use these buttons here to select different samples. So we just move down to the next kick the next one and you can go right down through the whole sample set as well so let's stick with that first one but yeah you can do the same with the snare or whatever we've got in slot three so let's have that as an open hi-hat Uh, let's just stick a 
couple more of these until I can demonstrate the swing. We've also got swing here. You've got root in here to any of the four effects units. One, two, three, and four. Controls for these are at the top up here. So here we are on FX3, FX4, and you can root directly to that as well. This is something I didn't explain last time, and it's not immediately obvious. Um, it's a monitor button, which is kind of ASCII art uh, of someone wearing headphones, because I couldn't fit the word monitor on there, basically. <laughs> okay, that's it for a quick look at the remix decks and the step sequencer. Um, I'll be coming back with another video just to explain the final features of this as well, and also a future one where I'll be looking a little more closely at Touch OSC itself. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.